far, so good day out, good walk. Yeah. Lovely day here in England. Beautiful day. I thought, Scott and I thought I'd tell some, some encounter things I've had over the years. Yeah, you've come across a few things, haven't you? Yeah, over the years, yeah. I don't, people don't know, but I was, spent seven years in the Royal Air Force Police, uh, home and away, uh, home and abroad, and um, something happened to me, summer of 1991. I was stationed at a place called RAF Swanton Morley in Norfolk. Don't exist anymore, it's changed to an army base. And But I was stationed there and it was lunchtime, I was on duty. It was a midweek and I was sat on a table on my own having lunch. How long ago? 1991, summer of 1991. So that's 20, 32 years ago. Years. Long time ago. So I'm just sat having my lunch on my own, full, full police uniform and uh, Two gentlemen walked in, late 20s, early 30s, dark suits, black suits, shirt and tie, dark ties. And uh, they got, got in the queue for the food and they got the food. And they're looking around somewhere to sit. And they saw me and they come and sat with me. And I noticed that in the top pocket, they had the warrant card in a wallet that folded out so it could see a picture of them and, and the, the police warrant card that everybody got was a Dutch policeman. So they were policemen. So they come and sat with me and they said hello. I said hello to them. and. Uh, I says, what, what, why are you here? He says, oh, we're, we're going up north and uh, we heard this is a good place to have something to eat on his way up. I says, yeah, and the, the food was good there, Scott. It's a small base, but the food was fantastic. <laughs> and you could pick up a, a meal ticket for about one pound and have a two-course meal. You yeah. know, I mean, it was ridiculous. So I, I asked him what, what unit they're with, and they said, oh, we're with Provost and Security Services. I says, oh, right, I, I, I don't know what that is. So they say it's a part of... Uh, RAF police, but it's based on a place called Rudlow Manor in Wiltshire. That's gone as well. So that's what I'm telling you, this is all gone. And I says, oh, what do you do then? They says, well, we're low-flying complaints. I says, look, low-flying complaints, that's a good number, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> going around, talking to people, yeah, we go around talking to people, you know, what, planes going too fast and planes disturbing horses. We go all over the country. They tell me the name, but I can't remember 30 years ago. I can't remember. So anyway, I finished, I finished my lunch and I go back to back to work and I said goodbye and they, they went and I went back to the gate and I saw them leaving an a, a, a unmarked black car, Ford, Ford Escort and what have and, and they went. Anyway, I didn't think nothing of it, nothing of it until a few years later and I'm in Cyprus and I've been posted to Akateri Garrison in Cyprus and um, I'm there. And I'm, I'm, I'm into all kinds of strange stuff. I like reading books of UFOs. And I like reading stuff about ghosts and Bigfoot. And this one one night, I'm on, I'm on the post and I'm reading a book. It's night time and I'm reading a book about UFOs. And the duty officer come to see me. He was a police officer as it happened. And he come to see me and uh, he said, are you interested in that, Simon? I said, yes, sir, yeah, I like UFOs. He says, oh, he says, that, that's weird. He says, because... My mate from training got posted to low flying complaints at PNSS Rudlow Manor. I said, Oh, yeah, yeah, I've met some of them guys. It sounds a good job. He said, Do you know it's a cover for, for researching and investigating UFOs? <laughs> he says, I said, What? He says, Yeah, men in black, black suits, black ties, white shirts. It's PNSS. I says, You're joking. He says, No, Simon, it's true. And I've, I've researched it now online and I've dug deeper. And I think people's made videos of going to Rudlow Manor, and it, it, it is correct. Yeah. It has come out mm. that they were investigating. So in that day, in 1990, the summer, <laughs> I met two <laughs> men in black. <laughs> Unbelievable. It is. But yeah. they were just normal people. Yeah. Uh, but they had the perfect cover, the, the low-flying complaints. Yeah. You know, they went round. So, yeah. an interesting one. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, yeah. So while I was still at Cyprus, talk about that, uh, Akateri Garrison, I was on um, 12 signals unit. I don't know if anything's there now, it's over 30 years, so I don't know. And I was, I did a 12 hour day shift and I come back to the barracks and uh, I had something to eat and then I was laid in my room and about 9, 9.30, I went out onto the balcony, where the long balcony where the water fountain was. So I got some cold water, because you couldn't drink the tap water there. So I got some cold water and I'm sat and I'm leaning out, looking out looking out to the horizon and I see a light over here and I'm looking at it and it's like pinkish white and it's coming towards us quite slow and I'm thinking what? I wonder what that is 
My first thought was that it's the helicopter that as it gets dark does a patrol the perimeter of the base. Mm -hmm. The base was massive. The sovereign base area is massive in Cyprus. And that was codenamed Night Sun. But it was an old helicopter and it used to make a hell of a racket. And this keeps coming closer and it's a triangle. I can see it's a triangle and it's silent. So I turn around, run to my next door neighbour, who's another copper, I won't say his name, knock on his door, drag him out, and we watch as this thing comes over. And this thing's about the size of an F-16. It's a triangle, it's got lights in each corner, and you can see a light, and it was pinkish white. And it was about from here, 150, 200 yards away from us. And it was going really, really, you know like a speed of plane comes in when it's gonna land? You think it's going to stand still, but it's yeah. actually going about yeah. 100, 200 miles out. But, yeah. And it's silent. And the most eeriest thing is, the garrison was quiet. Even the cicadas were making no noise. So this is a garrison of hundreds and hundreds of soldiers, airmen. And there's always noise and music and ruckus going on on the garrison. Not a sound. No. Not yeah. a sound. And it went straight past us, straight past us, not a noise. It disappeared. So then I looked at him, he looked at me. And this is back in 94, it's April 94, and we ran, ran downstairs and there used to be a phone there, because we didn't have mobile phones then. So we got the block phone and phoned the uh, air traffic control, RAF Akateri. Straight on phone, yeah, I'm Corporal Towers, I'm, and uh, is there anybody, uh, anybody flying out towards uh, Akateri, uh, 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 Episcopi? And they went, no, nothing now, nothing now, we're all closed for night. And I thought, wow. You know what the weird thing is? We never talked about it again. We never reported it. No. We never did anything. And it was, I forgot about it until years later. Yeah. yeah. Why? I, I was reporting I didn't even write it in my notebook. I didn't make a report. I didn't do anything. No. Really weird. That is weird, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you just yeah. got to think that is strange. That is weird. So another time, and this is probably 1998, and uh, I'm out of the service now, I've done my seven years, and uh, I'm living in a place called Fakenham in Norfolk. And I'm living in a converted water mill in an apartment. And I've, I've got a job working nights and days somewhere, and um, I'm newly married, and my wife wanted a dog that lived in an apartment. But I let her get a dog for company because I was out all the time. But the problem is, we had to take turns getting up to let the dog out, so we had to take the dog for a walk. So across the road was a park, and at the bottom of the park were these tall poplar trees, done on thin poplar trees. Yeah. They're about 30, 40 foot high. Anyway, it's dog woke me up at five to go to the toilet, so I'm, I'm down. It's, it's a summer's day, it's five, it's light, 5.15. Anyway, I walk across the road, let the dog go out. And I'm watching, I, I see some glint near these poplar trees, and this thing pops up, and it's a circle, but it's made out of triangles. So it's not a sphere, but it's like ball, but it's made out of it's triangles, it's silver. Yeah. And it's about, I don't know, not a massive, meter. yeah, not massive, but it seemed to, it was intelligent because it popped down and then sort of popped up, then popped my down, popped my up, popped my down. And I'm thinking, I didn't turn my mobile phone, I had nothing. I'm thinking, what, what, what is it? That is weird. Anyway, I said nothing. Next morning, it was my wife's turn to take the dog. And then when I'm having breakfast, she says, you know what? I saw something strange popping up and down these popular trees. <laughs> I said, it wasn't made of triangles, was it? She said, yeah. <laughs> I says, I saw it yesterday. <laughs> So that's, oh, weird. Yeah, but it, it, it was like it's like you know, like pop up, pop down, pop. Yeah. Not seeing it, I'm seeing it. So it, it was really, really again, good. no noise at all. Zero noise, zero noise, nothing at all. People oh, say yeah. it could be a balloon, but balloons don't go up and down. Please don't hide. There's no wind, yeah. but, you know. It, it was strange. So, and then we go to the video that we've got on our site of, of the, the orbs on there. Uh, yeah, yeah well. Guy. Yeah, well, that that's that was coming back from the pub on the road that I live on with my daughter. You know, mm. And um, before I could get my phone out, I saw them. I've seen them loads of times, but I saw them and there was three of them and they were dancing about. And by the time I got my phone out, there was just one. And, and it, it's hard because it's pitch black, living yeah. in the middle of nowhere. There's no reference and it's points. in the sky. And it's in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Up the sky. Oh, aye, up yeah. in the sky. And that, we're well, doing... Doing everything like that. Everything people say happens. Yeah. Everything that you see on the recordings that Americans have had, you know, when they see these tic tacs, whatever, you know, the, these unbelievable movers, David yeah. Favors, and all them videos have got of it. Yeah. It's exactly like that. Yeah. But yeah. I live in the middle of nowhere. This is like 11 o'clock at night. 
yeah. what is it? And because there's no point of reference, you can't really. No, show you it can't. It's difficult. It's difficult for anybody to understand. But um, if you listen to the full video and hear me speaking to my daughter, I was about 16 at the time, 17. She was in awe with it. You could tell by her voice. She was yeah. like, "Wow!" And I said to her, "Nice thing." And the thing is, it didn't go when I went in. I just got bored. <laughs> I just went in. Yeah. I could have stayed there for another hour, but yeah. I was just bored watching it. Yeah. But it's like it was showing off. Yeah. And I'm like, "What? What? what yeah. What's that about?" You needed to do a reference. You needed to. Yeah, but video, I was like, I'd had a few. Uh, I've had a few beers, and it was yeah. eleven o'clock, yeah. and it was next cold. time. Hopefully, we'll catch better. Yeah, pictures. I mean, uh, I think people don't realise. Not many people look up at the night sky, you know, no. people go in the houses, go to bed. There's very few people look up there. And that's a lesson. Always look round. Look you. round your took look your local look, environment. Look around the trees, look in the sky. There is things out there. And I tell you another thing that's just out I've read this week. They've actually got conclusive DNA proof that we've got black panthers in this country now. Oh right. That's in the newspaper this week. Google it, have a look. Definitely got black panthers. We've been seeing them for years. Yeah, we saw them on the base in Norfolk. They, they are there. They yeah. are living well. They're not. They never harmed anybody. They're very reclusive. Very, you know. Interesting. Yeah. So there's a lot more so, things. Yeah. Even better. Keep your eye out for anything. Yeah. If you want to send us it, send us it. I mean, yeah. we're only learning. We only learn by by seeing more, doing more, reading more. Yeah. You know, that's all we are. That's a comment down below. If you've yeah. Got any comments please. About this. Especially ex-service people. If you've people. had ex experience of this. Let yeah. us know. Please do. And please like and subscribe. Please. And we'll talk later. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.